Hello, hello, hello. It is going to be starting in just a second. I'm going to just check a few boxes on my end. Um, I should be able to already see the stream chat. Yeah, it should be available. Hello. Let me see what's up. Test. Yeah, it's supposed to be so I can see what's up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. I can't really see the chat. Let me refresh this. See what's up. Do 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 do. Da -da 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 -da. No, it's not popping up, but I can at least see it on YouTube. So I'm just gonna probably just rely on that for now until it sorts itself out. It's all good, regardless. Okay, so let me let me do this so I can pop this chat out. And then let's switch over to my screen so you can see what's up. Hello friends. How's everyone doing? Um I'm assuming you guys can hear me okay. Is that true? Maybe, possibly. All right, so I'm gonna be doing some more studying as well as asking or answering any uh, questions. And uh, one of the things that I'm gonna be practicing at this moment, um, awesome. Yeah, there's a huge delay, so I gotta remember that too. I'll get in the swing of these things again. I'll get back into my streaming order. Uh, in the past, I would usually have people hanging out with me, and I think I'm gonna do that again. But the, the point is, is that uh, I would always be very reliant on having people to hang out and join me. But I realized I should just get back to just streaming without anybody. Um, and the reason why is just so I can just be more consistent. Yeah. So I think I made this, this brush the way that I want it. So let's go ahead and name it. And then why don't we create another one? And my goal is actually to, to try to get better at drawing more. Now I'm like a, traditionally a painter, like I paint a lot of my designs. <laughs> But I think it's time for me to kind of get better at just drawing in general. Um, because I, I think that there's a lot of charm in drawing that you just don't get. How do I, can I actually pop this out? Oh yeah, check it out, pop it out. And then uh, I wonder if I can, now I can just put that there just so I can check in on myself. All right, let's go to the restream chat. Oh yeah, seems like it's all cut up there too. Yeah, looks like it's all good. Okay, well, whatever. What brush do I use? I use all sorts of brushes. I usually like to paint with this, just a round brush. Sorry if you don't see me painting, I'm just doing some some house cleaning on the outside. Um, But you know, I tend to I tend to just paint however I want and I worry about the brush later. Um, sometimes I'll use texture brushes to help me get a painting going, but ultimately I don't really care. Oh, there's definitely a delay from the YouTube to restream. I might just switch all completely over to just YouTube streaming, but we'll see. We shall see. All right, so let me try to use this brush here. Okay, so let's let's work with this one, and then let's do some some painting. So let's put some shape dynamics on this. 
Let's get rid of the transfer pen pressure. Okay. And then, and then I think this is good enough. I think. Oh, you know what? We need less spacing. Is this similar to the other brush that I, I was using? I don't know. But anyways, you had food? <laughs> uh, no, not yet. It's not lunchtime just yet over here. It is hot right now, though, which is weird. Uh, I've just come from watching Spider-Verse for the third time. Oh, man. I love the Spider-Verse. I think it's one of my favorite movies. I think it's, like, in general, just, like, one of my favorite films. Not just, like, not just because of its animation. Like, it's not, like, a, just a good movie for animation. It's, like, a great movie. Three times. I've only watched it twice. I think it's available for um, um, renting now, right? So I might just go and rent it. All right, this is this seems pretty good. So maybe we'll make this one a brush too. Comic brush pen one. All right, and then this is just a straight up pen. And I think I need to like have a triangle brush. Uh, I have found that when I started my number, uh, my numbering of brushes, it made me focus more on design or oh, limiting my number. I'm sorry. I skipped the whole word. I have found that when I started limiting my number of brushes, it made me focus more on design. Would you say that this is a good habit to get into? Yeah, absolutely. I think whatever gets you to do good work is a good habit. Uh, some people have different habits, right? And, you know, there, there are some universal stuff, right? There's some things that are just true for everyone. For instance, uh, if you just draw a lot, you know, I did a whole video about like talent, for instance, and I was talking to my friend offline about it. Um, and he was, he was like, I don't know, man. Like, I think there's some people that are just born talented and, you know, I addressed it in a video. I don't know why it kind of keeps getting overlooked, but um, I talk about like how some people do have advantages. You know, of course, there's going to be people who have just a straight advantage over someone else. But the focus was not about the advantage, right? The focus is about um, putting the effort in. And so like one of those universal things is that like if you take somebody to some average Joe and you just have them draw a lot, you know, they're going to get really good pretty, pretty effectively. Uh, maybe they will never be as good as X artist, right? Because that artist just for whatever reason has something in them that just makes them extraordinary, you know? But that's the point that like that makes them extraordinary. We're talking about outliers here. We're not talking about the mo majority of people. But uh, interestingly enough, I think the majority of people that you guys all might admire, uh, a lot of them are actually... Um, not not as special as you may think. They're they're just really, really good at just staying focused and putting that effort in. And so going back to the, kind of the, the original point you were saying, like, you know, is it a good habit to limit my brushes? I think so, because sometimes people focus way too much time on the brushes uh, because they think that the brushes are going to bring something that's just never going to come, which is the, the actual skill. And so uh, absolutely get used to, um, you know, get used to, like being a good artist versus relying on tools, you know? Uh, and then when you start to become a really good artist, then the tools become that much better uh, and that much more effective. Like I, I use all sorts of, um, I use all sorts of tools and, and techniques, uh, but ultimately I'm just a, a good artist. So that the techniques and tools, um, you know, they don't, they don't hold me back or anything. They just, they keep me moving. 
Yeah. All right. Cool. So, um, but yeah, anything that will get you to draw every day. Because like I said, there's some things that are just universal. And that's one of them. Drawing every day. Okay. I think this is good. I'm going to call this the triangle brush. Triangle. Yeah, I actually do this thing where I, I go through and purge a lot of my brushes and stuff. Right now, I actually, it's one of those one of those times where I have too many again, and I need to like kind of purge. There's a lot of them that I just don't use a lot, so I'll probably go through. Um, you know, I'll do something like that right now. So I use airbrush a lot. I use my basic one, two. Uh, I don't necessarily use the basic three. Um, I mean, I guess let's see what I was trying to do there, but I don't really think I use it. So let's just get rid of that hard brush for sure. Um, hard texture brush. Now I already kind of made a couple just now. I can just start using those. Um, blending brush. No, I don't really use that. Um, cartoony. Nope. Don't really use that. Chisel brush. Oh yeah. I use these chisel brushes. The scatter ones. Nope. Th those for like some special occasion. I had like a project I was working on. Um, yeah, I just made those, so we'll just kind of hang on see if I'll actually keep using them. Detail, don't really use these detail brushes. Um, dotted texture, don't use that. Um, let's see what's up. Hi from Belarus. Cool, what's up? So many good artists in it as well. Craig Mullins, etc. Yeah, Craig Mullins is probably, <laughs> I mean, he's a great artist, but he's actually probably like the least impressive out of all of them, which says a lot about all the other artists. You know, it's not a knock at him. It's more of like, there's a lot of really good artists. Um, yeah, I don't really use this brush anymore. Comic, I just made that. The Epic, no, that's not really a brush I use. Um, let's see. I have a question. I've always been struggling with distraction. I try to use an hourglass to do these one hour sessions and 10 minute pauses, but still find myself distracted by everything. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that right now. Uh, since I've just got distracted myself trying to get these done. I think that's good for now. I mean, there's there's some more work to be had here, but I'll, I'll just kind of just chill. Okay, so why don't we kind of get have some fun with the, the brushes I just made. Whoops. All right. So distraction, right? Okay, so let's talk about distraction. Um, you know, a lot of people feel, um, you know, being distracted is oh what hey mike did you want to join in on this i don't i don't have my discord set up actually so never mind it's not gonna be that easy never mind next time <laughs> um being distracted case in point um so one of the things that i i think a lot of people tend to uh like the the problem that they tend to face whenever they get distracted is that you know they're they're not committed uh, to the, the very thing that they're trying to get really good at, and and there's a lot of reasons why this might happen, you know. And one of the things that I usually encourage people to try to do is to just like get used to removing your distractions. Um, so this is another skill to be trained. So if you're really bad at um, being distracted then instead of doing like the one hour session that you were just talking about, why don't you try to do like 30 minutes, you know, where you just uninterrupted, like completely removed from any kind of distraction. And how would you go about doing this? Well, one of the ways that I would suggest doing this is, you know, whatever devices or whatever tools that distract you, just get rid of them. So for instance, if you have like a, a, a phone and it just, it bleeps a lot or like it makes those like, you know, and, or it does like the thing, you know, then, uh, turn that off. I, in fact, I have no notifications on my phone except for uh, messages specifically, um, so that I can get contact with my, my family. Right. But even then what I tend to do is that I, I tend to actually, uh, um, I tend to like make it so that that if only messages uh, only messages that I get are from people that I want to get messages from. Um, so sometimes like I'll, I'm like part of several different uh, message groups 
And a lot of times these people are just like, they're just talking, having these long conversations. And sometimes I jump in, sometimes I don't. Um, but when I don't want to jump in, like, I just want to kind of like just chill and just not be distracted by this stuff. Uh, like I'm, I'm working, I'll actually just go into the notifications, uh, tab and literally, uh, especially with messenger, uh, cause I use Facebook messenger as my default messenger. Um, I'll just, I'll just literally turn off messages, uh, notifications for the whole day or for an extended amount of time. And this is obvious, right? Like why I would do this. So that way I don't just keep getting those, like those notification, uh, bleeps, right? And if you don't do stuff like this, like if you don't like practice, like, or create like these situations where you're trying to limit your distractions, then, you know, you're not, you're not really practicing how to stay focused, right? You're just kind of like pretending to, you know, you have all the things, you have the hourglass set up, like you said, you got like your workstation, but you're not like, um, really training yourself, you know? And if you treat, if you treat, um, if you treat the, the aspect of practicing as its own kind of like, um, what, what am I trying to say here? Yeah. Like if you just track, like train, like focus as another thing to practice, then you'll, you will take these things a little bit more seriously. You'll, you will like turn off your distractions. You, you will get rid of these, these distractions. Um, but like I said, like focus in on, um, on smaller scale stuff, right? Like don't, don't, uh, don't try to do it like within like a two hour range or one hour, range, like something that you normally can never do anyway. Like, right. Like w why all of a sudden do you think you're going to be able to like pull like a, a three hour work session, you know, or even a one hour work session when you barely can do it, uh, without practicing or without staying focused on it. So, but like, can you do 30 minutes? Like that's maybe seems a little bit more reasonable. That's something a lot more obtainable, you know? And if that's the case, then you should, you should really go for that as a tool to, to practice. You know what I mean? Uh, otherwise, yeah, you're just kind of like kind, kind of going too hard, too fast. And I highly recommend us, uh, you know, being a lot more, um, slower with your pace. So hopefully that helps you out. All right, let me see what's up. Let me go back. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, any advice on this? I just gave you some. Oh, wow. I can't believe I cut you live, sir. What's up? I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to be an inspiration. Uh, I'm watching this paint while painting. So, yay. Awesome. What's up, people? Yo, brain. Hey, brain. <laughs> How many hours a day do you work? Um, it all depends, but I try to do like a normal work, work day between six to eight hours. Sometimes it's more. Um, awesome. Thank you for the advice. I'm also purging my brushes. That's really helpful. <laughs> He's like, oh shoot, I should be doing that too. Anywho, your videos and classes are very helpful. Thank you again. Yeah, not a problem, Bryce. Uh, what about if you search up reference? Also, I find music is mo the most distracting. Um, yeah, so I call that positive uh, procrastination. Like when you, when you spend a lot of time gathering reference, um, you should gather reference, but again, you should time it. You should put a timer on it. Like if you're going to gather reference, put like a 30 minute timer. So like after 30 minutes of gathering reference, um, you're out of there. You know what I mean? Again, like you just got to be co like co constantly practicing to stay focused. And if you find yourself spending four hours gathering reference and only spending 10 minutes drawing, clearly you're spending way too much time gathering reference. You know what I mean? So you need, you need like strategies to kind of prepare for that. You need like uh, a point of, of uh, context. So, you know, like, okay, I need to be way less, like way less involved in reference gathering. Uh, I actually call that, um, what the, ha what happens there is I call that like, um, positive procrastination you know, or productive procrastination because it feels like you're being productive, but you really aren't, you know, it's, it's not that you shouldn't be gathering reference. That's not what I'm getting at. It's that you shouldn't be spending all your time gathering reference. That's, that's the difference. And one way to, again, one way to kind of gauge this is that like, if you find yourself spending way too much time gathering reference and very little time actually working, um, 
I always say, you know, don't be an, an art collector, be an art historian, you know? So an art collector collects art, but doesn't necessarily know anything about the art they've collected. But if you collect, if you gather the art, but you like know a lot about it, like you know who the artists are, you, you've, you've studied the reference extensively, so you have a good understanding of why you got the reference from the, in the first place, then you're becoming less of a spectator, you know? You're becoming more, you're, you're participating more. And I find like a lot of people tend to not participate when they gather reference. They just kind of like, it's like a, it feels good because you gather all this beautiful imagery and you're like, man, once I start getting into drawing, like once I start practicing, then yeah, man, like I'm going to be amazing. Um, I can give you a good, good example of like what happened to me uh, just uh, yesterday. So I was gathering lots of reference because I'm trying to like get better at drawing uh, more illustrative and more comic book stuff. Uh, right now, this is still me sticking to one of the original themes of like trying to be better at drawing uh, black women because I don't draw them at all, if ever. And uh, I talk about this in a different, I think it was one of my study sessions. I talk about how if I want to draw something a lot and get more practice, I have to have a strong basis. And once I get good at it, I'll just start drawing it intuitively more. And, and then that way I have more things to draw, you know. Uh, I think it's good design to be able to draw from an array of references. You know, if I'm only drawing the same old Andrew Loomis people, that's actually limiting my abilities as an artist, you know. Uh, but if I can widen that, that s scope, then I can totally become even more valued as an artist. Uh, not just because, uh, like, productively it's really good, but also I just want to. You know, why not? Like, why not get good at this? Uh, and then I, I said, okay, well, you know, uh, as I started drawing comics, like panels and trying to learn from this type of aesthetic, I was like, well, you know, I have to like draw backgrounds and I'm not a background artist by trade. So I figured like this is going to probably be the next thing I'm going to put a lot of time and effort in. Uh, you can't see anything yet because I'm trying to show you the reference that I've been gathering. So I spent like a, a lot of time yesterday during the day gathering some reference that I'm going to start practicing. And I, I was looking at this image and I was like, holy shoot, man, like I need to get on this quick you know and so i gathered like quite a few references but you can see like it was originally it was like characters uh mostly and i was like wait no i'm not gonna just draw just characters just standing there that's what i do for concept art i need to like be real illustrative i actually need to be able to draw um some sense of um a world <laughs> all right so and i was thinking of like okay well let me try to find the hardest thing to draw right because maybe I won't be drawing these super hyper-realistic stuff, but if I can have some ability at this, um, anything that comes after will will look really impressive to most people, right? Um, so I gathered like some of the most impressive images, but I, I didn't spend hours, right? You can see I only gathered maybe like a, a dozen or two, you know, which is not a lot of reference images that most people would gather if they're trying to like, most people would fill up a whole page of just images like this. And that's what I'm saying. Like I've gathered enough that it's time for me to like, when I have time to come back and actually study each of these or most of these, right? Uh, I did a study of this image because this is, says, speaks to me the most because it's not just like super hyper-realistic um, sci-fi dystopian world. I don't think I'm gonna only draw that kind of stuff, but this is like really, really challenging perspective that I don't know how to do really well. And so I was like, you know, I need to like practice this. And again, like the point I'm making is that a lot of people gather way too much reference that they don't get started with. And that, that's the point of what I'm saying. You know, don't just collect art, you know, be someone who's proactive. So, all right, hold on. Let me see what's up. Hope that helped you out. Yeah, fooling yourself into being productive. That's right, volley motion coming from Twitch. Let me see what's up. Let me try to go back up. Let me go back up. All right, let me keep going here. I'm going to do a couple sketches because I'm, I'm not only going to just do like practice this style because I really do want to get better at this type of stuff, but I, I'm also going to do a painting because I know a lot of you guys also just want to be really good painters. So it's not just enough uh, for me to just draw what I like. I think, you know, if you're going to come hang out with me, why don't I do some paintings too, right? It's only fair. And so... Uh, but I'm sure most of you guys still don't mind me drawing this type of stuff too. You guys get value just hanging out, talking. But you know, I, I I feel like I should I should be a little bit more involved. And I always like to paint anyway, so it's not a bad it's not a bad deals. And so 
Uh, let me see. Where was the... How many hours today? I already got there. Okay. Hey, Professor. What's up, Quillet? Hellos. Uh, you can also go into the gear icon top right and select mute conversation set a duration. Yeah, totally. That's what I'm saying. I, I do it for 24 hours because it's easy. I don't want to like manually put like seven hours and 22 minutes because <laughs> then I'll be free. I'll just do 24 hours. And if I feel like I want to talk to my friends at that moment later, that I, I just will. But it won't constantly notify. I, I've actually thought about just muting them all together and then just checking in when I want to rather than getting notifications. Um, in fact, now that I say it out loud, I feel like I should just do that. AJ, do you know Adam Duff? He's an artist having his channel about art and stuff. As I know, he's a big fan of you. Would it be amazing to hear you guys talking? Yeah, sure. I don't I don't think I know him directly. Um, I might know of him. I might have ran into him too, actually, uh, if he goes to many events. I meet a lot of artists that I don't know who they are uh, by name or even by their faces. And then when I see their art, though, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I totally know that person. I've always said that if there's like a really like these big art conventions they, they should do something where they make people print their artwork on their shirts uh because then more people would recognize who who you are and be able to uh talk to you more <laughs> you know what i mean like i there's like even my students I, I teach lots and lots of students tons of people um and sometimes i meet them at cons and they're like hey it's me and they'll say their name and i'm like uh, what who and they're like oh i took your mentorship in you know so and so year and i'm like oh what Okay. And, and then I say to them, well, you know, like, show me your work and I will almost immediately not remember. And then they would do that. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, totally. You know, and I would remember because I, I remember most of my students by their work, less uh, by their voice and even their name, especially not their face because our class is entirely just uh, no faces. Um, so yeah, he, he might be one of those people that I might've met and I just don't remember, or I just don't know him at all. So if he happens to be listening in my bad, uh, let's, let's set up something, just email me and then, uh, we'll, we'll do a thing. I'm always down to talk and hang out. I like talking and hanging out. And so let's keep on moving. Yeah. Cool thing, man. Thank you. I'm glad that helped you out. Uh, that looks like it's in Russian here. Let me. Let me translate that. I have no idea what you just said, my Russian comrade. Let's uh, detect language, yes, to English. How do you want to see the, the concepts in 3D coat, uh, which will smoothly go into ZBrush and then be finished in Photoshop? Love to, uh, at the pseudo media, I'm, I'm assuming you're saying like, you like to combine media. Uh, well, here, let me let me type this and so people can see it uh, Russian no Romanian there you go um, I tend to just do a simple 3d mock-up it doesn't have to be detailed detail tailed is that how you spell detailed what the <laughs> Doesn't have to be detailed because I have most of my skill in painting. It doesn't need to be anything special. Sometimes I use a very sloppy mock-up of a 3D render to do super realistic images i use my painting skills to make up for the lack of value from my 3d screen grabs all right i'm not gonna say that <laughs> but there you go Oh, it's too many characters. All right, just read that, <laughs> and then, uh, and then, or just pause the video and read this, and then just unpause it. I can't share. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe I can do this. I can share. I can share in increments. Yeah, there you go. There you go, my Russian comrade. 
dun, 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 dun. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right, getting back to I'm gonna draw for a little bit, y'all. So I'm gonna take like I'm gonna look at one more precious question. First time catching your stream. Awesome. Fooling yourself into thinking you're productive. Yeah, have all emotion. Hey Jay, glad you're streaming again. I have a question about analyzing failures. I tend to get discouraged when my drawings isn't turning out the way I want to give up altogether. Um <laughs> is is the translation really funny, guys? <laughs> well, as long as you guys can understand what I was what I was trying to say there. I'm just trying to be an all around helpful artist here, yeah? I don't speak Russian at all. I don't even know anything about it, but you know, we got Google Translate. Take advantage of tech. Um, anyways, uh, how, okay. Uh, discourage whenever I do my drawings, turning me, uh, turning out the way that I want them and giving up altogether. How do you, I fix this? Okay. So, um, you know, this, this is a very common thing. Like how do you analyze your failure? Uh, most, most people, you, you can, you can take solace into uh, respecting that most people feel this way. Most people feel like like trash whenever they're they do the work that they do. Uh, Nobody is really happy with their work uh, entirely, and and I think this is just like a matter of just how people are. It's it's human insecurity at its at its best. You know, humans aren't built for drawing and and in the way. Or I'm sorry, not built for drawing. I actually don't believe that. I think we are built for drawing. What I meant for, was to say is that humans aren't necessarily built for, um, this modern society. And so a lot of like, a lot of these types of, uh, ideas and thoughts kind of cross our mind of like, you know, what it is to be a good artist. Uh, and then one of these things is expectations tend to creep in. So what you're talking about is just, you, you have like way too much of an expectation of value coming out of your work, right? And if you can kind of change those expectations to be more realistic, you'll feel less, you'll feel less like uh, upset, okay? Um, and the way that I usually tell my students to kind of position themselves with this is like, think of it like this, like imagine that you are uh, a weightlifter and you go to the gym and you, you say to yourself, you know, I'm gonna go lift some weights and then you see someone like me like lifting thousands of pounds and then you're like, oh man, I'm going to totally do that. And so then you go to try to do thousands of pounds and it's just a complete and utter um, failure, right? Because your expectations were misguided. Of, of course, you're not going to be able to lift that much weight, right? But you thought you could because you maybe saw it in your reference or maybe you, you felt like in your mind you can see it clearly. Um, what I'm trying to say to you is basically, it's not true. You you can't draw what you can see in your mind. It's not the reality, you know? Because if you could, then you would just be doing it, right? Uh, but you can't, obviously. And so you need to get, kind of get rid of that expectation. Just like if you went to the gym and you had these expectations of lifting large amounts of weight uh, that you've never practiced, you've never trained. Uh, I would have students come to me and be like, hey, you know, like, no, I, I used to do like tons of anatomy studies and I've done lots of practices and drawing and all that stuff. And I'm like, no, dude, you have not. You haven't done nearly as much as you think you have. You know, you, you had to think of it that way. Like going to the gym, let's say, you know, once every month is not a like training. You know, uh, if you went to the gym, let's say a whole year. But then you stop going to the gym for like another year. You see the point? Like it's it's not it's not like a lot of the information is retained entirely. It doesn't also mean that you're entirely unskilled either. You know, you have some skill. It's just um, the amount of skill that you think you have. It's it's miscalculated. You need to reevaluate like where you actually are. Um, and it's actually smarter. It's actually better just to say to yourself that you're just really bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, because if you say to yourself that you're actually bad and and there, why am I expecting to be better, uh, then you can only can level up from there, right? But if you have like the subtle the subtle hints of like, no, I think I can I should be doing better. Like, why am I not doing better? Then that's when you get discouraged because you're comparing to yourself to something that doesn't actually it's not really there. But if you say to yourself like, oh man, I'm I'm terrible at this. Like like I just gave the example of like how I'm not a background environment artist, right? I don't paint backgrounds. I don't know how to do it effectively. I've done it a few times, but I'm really bad at it. And so, and I recognize that immediately as like, you know, I need to go and get reference and start studying and practicing starting today. 
you know? Um, and that's, that's what I have been doing. You know, I have literally just been studying and practicing the very thing that I'm very terrible at. And if you can recognize that someone like me, someone that you think, oh, oh my senpai, even senpai, you, you'll practice senpai. You know, yes, of course. <laughs> this is why I am your senpai. I am a skilled artist because I train all the time. The difference between me and other artists who aren't as good as I am is, is, is just that I just train a lot. I practice a lot. You know, I am very bad at a lot of different things. And then whenever I feel that I want to get better at these different things, I just do it. I just do what I, it takes to get better. Some things I don't strive to do, get it get any better at some things I do some things I just really want to get really good at and so you have to recognize that when you're failing it's it's a symptom of success do you understand it's part of what it is to be successful um, it, it is the game changer it is the thing that separates those who do really well versus those who do not make it at all it, and it's really just that simple it's nothing more complicated than that um, so hopefully you can understand and respect that. Yeah, I might actually have to cut the painting aspect of this this demonstration. Sorry, because I, I think I hear my baby. I think he's calling my name. I have to go in like the next 10 minutes for show. But uh, let's take a couple more questions before I head out. So hopefully that gives you some some solid advice. Yeah. Yeah, like, don't worry, man. Failure is part of it, man. Like like I like I said, I did some studies of some backgrounds just um, last night while me and my wife were watching the movie. And um, they were they were really bad. <laughs> my environment stuff. I was like, oh, shoot. So I started watching some tutorials on, like, um, different strategies to be better at environments because uh, I'm not good at it. So I, too, need to watch and learn from people who are much better than me. And they'll explain it and uh, hopefully give me some guidance that I just don't have right now. Yeah, I can keep this just too, this, this drawing too, um, uh, too contemporary. I had to make her like some sort of cybernetic lady, like right away. Um, let me go ahead and see what's up. Let me read the chats. All right. Uh, I'm going to take a break here. From drawing, have you seen the uh, Green Book with Ar Aragorn? No, I have not. Uh, how how much research do you usually do before you actually start a project? A lot. Uh, example to design a new character. Uh, the amount of study and research I do is reflective of how shitty I am. Like if I'm really bad at something, then I study and practice a lot more. If I am skilled at it, I don't do it as much because I already kind of have a bedrock of information to build off of. Hello, another friend from Russia. Uh, holy shit. I mean, uh, uh, it just struck me he was Aragorn. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Uh, what do you draw every day? Uh, it depends on what I'm trying to learn. Uh, AJ, do you have any advice on how to protect your work online? Is it worthwhile to do so with watermarks, metadata, etc., or should you just accept that people will take you and sell your stuff? Uh, people can take it uh, and they can definitely sell it, but you can sue them. And so it, it, it all depends on how much value you get out of it. Like some people might take it, take your work and, and sell it, make a few dollars from it. And it's, it might not be worth your time because you have to get a lawyer that costs money. But if let's say someone like a big studio for whatever reason, for whatever reason, stole your work, like indirectly or directly. Uh, yeah, you definitely get a lawyer and, and sue them. Uh, and how's, how does that work? Well, I mean, if it's your work, it's actually the, especially in America, I don't know how it is, wherever you're from. Um, the copyright laws are pretty strong. Um, and, and a lot of people get kind of caught up on them sometimes whenever big studios use these type of copyright laws. Like for instance, when the a fan made a Pokemon game and then the Pokemon developer is like, nah, 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 you can't make that. And they did like a cease and desist and people got upset. Like the people are like, ha, oh, I mean, he's not trying to make money from it. He's just doing it for free. He's just a fan of your work. Um, like that same law that protects, you know, that big corporation is the same thing that protects us smaller people because if someone like, you know, did the same thing and they're getting all the recognition and you're not getting any of that, it would be sucky if that they were protected somehow because they were doing fan work. You know what I mean? Uh, in fact, a lot of the fan art you see online, uh, um, 
uh, unlike the ones that are like more satire or like mix mix matches of different characters, but the ones that are pretty close, but maybe like like I drew Batman, let's say, and it just looked like Batman, but like maybe my style, um, they could sue me if they wanted to. And again, it's it's not that they do, uh, because they understand like the cost of doing that is not really that important. In fact, it does help them in some ways to help push their stuff and build their brand, right? Um, but ultimately. You want to have that protection. So it, you just got to pay attention. And if you truly are afraid of like people jacking your stuff, yeah, you can always watermark it or you can put your website on it or something like that. Maybe do the metadata stuff that you're talking about. But no, like uh, uh, getting a copyright lawyer is all, all that you would need in most cases. And then they will, if they if there's a lot of money to be made, they, they won't charge you because they're going to get that money from that big corporation. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway. Or they're going to get it from the person that stole your work and made money from it. So, uh, I follow Anthony on Pinterest for all the great references he chooses. Oh, thank you. What level were you uh, when you started working? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Really bad. I was very, very bad. Um, are you going to any of the GDC after parties next week? I, I should be going to the art station one. So, if you want to come hang out, just come hang out. Just say, I'm Pavel. I talked to you on your stream that was on Sunday. And then I'll be, oh, yeah. I slightly remember that. <laughs> Don't translate. All right. How does one know if their work is good enough to start looking for work? Um, you know, when so people start to start to reach out. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more drawing, uh, just so it's not too static. No, nah, I, I don't think I can. I have to. I'm gonna iron out these last these last um, questions. I'm gonna roll out though right now. Okay. Actually, you know what? I think I there was something bothering me about this, and I think I I think I figured it out. No, that works better. Or maybe, yeah, that's fine. Um, so that's me writing in Russian. <laughs> Uh, no, that's cool. <laughs> How does one know their art is good enough for looking for work? Um, like I said, you, you, this is one of those things where it's just like, it's, it's hard to know, but I think in most cases, most people actually are good enough. Like most artists, um, like even the ones that are really junior level because there, there's someone out there looking for work of that quality, right? Because they can only afford that. Um, but you just won't get paid as much. Um, but the best way to tell like whether you can work for a studio or not is if your work is is pretty comparable to some of your favorite artists. Like if you look at some of your favorite artwork from your favorite video games and your work is similar to that quality, then you're probably likely to work. Um, and if you get too confident in your work, you can settle and not care to practice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I, I actually stopped practicing for like two or three years, really. I wasn't really practicing anything other than programming, which had nothing to do with art. But the point is, is that I have um, practiced a lot in the past. So, and if you don't want to practice anymore, then of, of course you don't have to. Hey, Anthony, love your work. I'm curious, what do you usually read or love to read? Literature, sci-fi? I don't really read. And when I do, I it's mostly audiobooks or articles. I like to read like information, like data, like things that people are teaching me. I read that type of stuff. I don't read like, the, the only places that I indulge in like fantasy or fictional story or storytelling is in movies and video games and, and TV shows. Uh, that's my favorite place to, to indulge in it. Uh, otherwise, I fall asleep. Hey, I like your work. You are so cool. And I have a question for you. I'm trying to solve a problem. I want you to understand and feel the composition. All right. I'm going to have to probably end the, like a lot of these questions are going to be really hard. What code of languages are you study, studying? And I'll, I'll get to your question some other time, buddy. I'll try to remember uh, the composition stuff, okay? But that's that's going to be like a long-winded answer. What coded languages? Uh, JavaScript, C++, and C Sharp. Uh, sweet voice. Thank you, Neuron. Anthony, how do you approach freelance work from a business standpoint? Do you uh, have a contract sort written, written out to make sure that you have clients signed so you don't get screwed over? Thanks. Um, yeah, that's going to be a long winded one too. So if you come back to the next one, Courtney, and I don't know how to say that person's name <laughs> that's written in Russian. Um, I'll try to answer those next time I do a stream. If, if not, just keep on trying to catch these and then just keep bothering me. Uh, I'm from Indonesia. This type of 
field profession as an illustrator concept artist still considered to be low here. Any advice to develop? That's also a long one. Do you review people's work? I only do that when I do my mentorships. That's the best time to do it. I sometimes review people on ArtStation, but it's like, it might take a month for me to get to you, but I try to get to everybody. When studying quality um, or quantity, I'm all about quantity. Yeah, quantity, man, all day. Uh, I love your work. You're such an inspiration to us all. Oh, thank you, Mario. Uh, and where can I take your classes? Online, if you have? Yes, you just visit my website, robotpencil.net, and you can find all that stuff there. I only have evening classes left for April, which is about two weeks from now. So you can go there and uh, find out more. All right, next time I'm going to do some paintings. And you know what? I'm going to... I'm going to make an effort to try to remember the other questions. So that way, if if you guys can't show, I know some people have different time zones. So there was a few that I think were pretty valuable. So this one right here, so you can just see. I'm going to answer that one. And then um, the Courtney one. Oh, hey, there's another one too. Hey, where is my cursor? And why aren't you doing word wrap, dude? Thanks, AJ. That was actual. How do you break down references? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that one too, Paul. And then the Indonesian. That's it. All the ones that came after. I apologize. So you guys can see I'm going to make a, a, a concerted effort. I will save this, and these will be the first few questions I answer. All right. Just, to, just so I can be nice and, and try to remember these. Um, but I might not always get to everybody's questions. Uh, obviously, the more I do these streams, the more I put, post videos on YouTube, the more popular I'm going to become. So this is eventually going to be a thing that's going to be really hard for me to do. Um, so it, when that problem comes, I'll try to find a solution to that. But ultimately, I'll just try to read the questions as they come. Uh, I'm almost certain that I will have some sort of question that will always be answered in some way, in some form, in some other video. So just be sure to watch uh, as much as you can from my videos. And then uh, and that way I can try to answer you indirectly. Otherwise, see you guys in the next stream. Cheers. Thanks for hanging out. Next time I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of painting, less studying. But th today I wanted to kind of get a study session and I, I've skipped two days of studying um, this specific kind of design stuff. So I thought I'd mix it with the comic book stuff that I'm trying to get better at as well as... Uh, the theme that I'm trying to get better at. So peace out and thank you guys for all the great and kind words and hanging out with me. Appreciate it. Latest round.